Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Gambia, Mamadou Tangara. Your Excellencies, distinguished participants and laureates, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I'm deeply grateful to my friend Richard Griffiths, who facilitated my participation in this August gathering for the second time. I'm really honored to be present here in person this year. Let me also express my profound gratitude to Tim Tripepi for selflessly working with my team here in New York and to the Board of Concordia for the trust they repose in my humble self. The story of Concordia is a story in which all of us have a place, a story that brings together luminaries, policy advocates, people at the leading edge for critical discussions to end the appalling level of inequalities around the world. For this annual summit of Concordia, it is refreshing to join opinion leaders of this day and age and hear voices that champion a deeply optimistic vision of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I carry with me the warm greetings of the government and people of the Gambia at this juncture and on behalf of His Excellency Adam Abaro, President of the Republic of the Gambia, I would like also to congratulate all the laureates. These awards are an acknowledgement for your invaluable services to mankind and your abiding faith in and ambition for a better world your services will endure beyond the lifetime of our own generation. The theme of this year's summit affects our daily life and is inextricably linked to our existence as a global family. As my contribution, I would like to talk on a topic that is not only relevant and crucial to our time, but close to my heart and critical to our shared future and aspirations. Other continents and countries have their own challenges and development aspirations. For its parts, as far as democracy and geopolitical risk are concerned, Africa is standing out as a continent willing to do much more, even with the immensity of the tasks ahead. You will find Africa's ambition and body in its agenda 2063, a futuristic document. As nations, we are striving to optimize outcomes and bridge divides as we pursue our national objectives. In the Gambia, we are putting a particular emphasis on public and cultural diplomacy as a potent instrument to tackle domestic challenges with the view to contributing to the global discourse and make a difference to international outcomes. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the year 2020 has been a year like no other owing to the surge of COVID-19 pandemic. It affected all countries around the world and the response from governments have been inherently geopolitical, involving issues relative to national security, global leadership and international cooperation and solidarity. Today, more than ever before, we are all conscious of the fact that the world is a global village that what affects one directly affects all of us indirectly, some more directly than others. We have real anxieties, and African countries are struggling to build back better with a focus on securing our interests and enhancing our influence in this emerging geopolitical landscape and dealing with the weaknesses of our health care systems. The focus should therefore be geared towards economic inclusion and we will prove that even in a time of severe economic strain, we can surmount problems as serious as technology and digital transformation. Unemployment, trade imbalances, economic development, climate change, in a spirit of cooperation and partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, we all came here for a reason, to foster concord around the world. We are gathered here today united in our commitment to forging a new direction, a commitment to mend the democratic future of the international system. 
and a commitment to direct the advantages of our time to solve the problems of the next generation. We cannot live no longer as happy go luckies We all know this crusade for human dignity and progress is for the next generation. It's an ideal we carry, but it's not only for ours. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I firmly believe in the value of democracy as a catalyst for better governance, greater security, and human development. As Kofi Annan, former UN Secretary General said, democracy, I quote, will remain the system best suited to protect and deliver peace development, human rights, and the rule of law. In a changing international order, and at a time when global democracy is challenged, preserving its prospects should be our main preoccupation. Democratic renewal and migration debates are a shared international agenda. As leaders, we need to think now about how to assess and address geostrategic risk to reframe the future of the world. And Concordia is building such partnership for social impacts. The world is undergoing a profound geopolitical reconfiguration. Many regions in Africa and around the globe have shifted from embracing, embracing the great hopes for democratization that emanate from popular revolutions and uprisings to becoming dangerous flashpoints. The Sahel region is trapped for almost a decade now in spiraling insecurity and instability. This has strained the political trajectories of many countries in the region, which are suffering from terrorism, organized crime, violent extremism, and unnecessary killing of people based on religions and social differences. This untenable situation is a stark reminder of the need for all to proactively work together in countering and combating this menace. The African Union and ECOWAS are working on missions and initiatives aimed at overcoming these challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the threshold of an emerging geopolitical landscape, which includes transformational changes in global politics, economics, technological advancement, and environmental resilience. These are stirring of greater change to come. Together, we can share the benefit of building more ladders of opportunity and making our countries more prosperous, our economies more vibrant, and consequently earn from our fellow citizens the best appreciation for better livelihoods. During the course of this summit, I look forward to working with all of you by reaffirming our shared aspiration through expanding the course of human progress around the world. As I said earlier, during this crucial geopolitical reshuffle with polarized debates, the urgent task at hand and the needs of the hour are for more thoughtful decisions and powerful and inclusive dialogue across cultures and societies. And I'm glad that today's gathering helps to meet that demand, that calling of our time. I very much thank you for your kind attention and wish you all successful sessions and productive deliberation ahead.